What's up, everyone? Keeping it real back this week with a full spoiler, spoiler cast of Suicide Squad and what we thought of it. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, bookmark this, come back, yada, yada, you know the drill. Diving right into it, talking about everything that's right and wrong <laughs> with so Suicide wrong. Squad. So, uh, yeah, so it sucks. Let's, uh, let's just talk I know, about it. Your I'm enthusiasm sorry, but... in that intro is really indicative of our enthusiasm for this movie after what seeing a, it. What a pisser, huh? What a pisser. I, I was so, so looking forward to this one. This was the one I was like banking on. Like, this and Doctor Strange are the two I've been looking forward to this year. And oh my God, it's so bad. It's so bad. I feel very burned on it to the point that I'm like, oh, but now I'm like, oh, Wonder Woman is the one that I'm like excited for. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, fool me through. I mean, Man yeah, of keep Steel. Keep kicking the can down yeah, the road. Yeah, Man right? of Steel looks like I don't, like 2001: A Space Odyssey, brilliant <laughs> compared oh to this. Uh, I like back, Man of Steel, but I get no, why I know, you're but like, that. but there, are, you know, you can have some criticisms of Man of Steel, but oh, of again, course. looking back, even Batman v Superman, I was like. That was like that was a masterpiece. I know. To this. I think I actually liked BVS more. We should point out that Joshua is the official reviewer of Suicide Squad for the movie, um, uh, uh, of the movie for the site. But um, yeah, BVS. I, I have to say, look, it's not a good movie. We all agree on that. But I felt like it was a more consistently well executed in its bad execution than Suicide Squad, which was just all over the map, tonally. Every I, I can't. I can count on one hand maybe the things I thought kind of worked in there, but... I actually yeah. thought Suicide Squad was a little better than BVS, although in, in different weird ways. It's hard to say. It's, it's, it's hard to compare a bunch <laughs> of movies that you think are bad. I actually think Man of Steel, BVS, and Suicide Squad are all bad. These are like three strikes, you're out, you know. Yeah. Good luck, DCEU. <laughs> Hope, hopefully Wonder Woman can save you. But no, yeah, this movie from like the trailer, especially like that Bohemian Rhapsody trailer, it was like, oh man, this is gonna be great, it's gonna be different, tone shift for the DCEU, and then you get into it. And I thought, it, I really loved the first act, which I think was why I liked the movie a little bit better than some other people. Um, but then from there, it just completely drops the ball, becomes boring, uh, predictable, which I think is the worst thing a movie like Suicide Squad could be, and really just couldn't wait for it to end. Yeah. It makes me so mad. Like, I don't understand how a movie that's two and a half hours long can be as underdeveloped and underconceived it's as this movie is. It's two hours and ten minutes. I'm but... sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't <laughs> that's know. 20 minutes of I pain sat you through spared. to the end credits. I, it just, yeah, I, I'm just so upset about it in so many different ways that and we can get into. there are talented people involved in making this movie. David Arab has made some good movies. You know, you got Will Smith, you got Margot Robbie, Jared Leto. You know, like, there are talented people Bella involved. Bella Davis. Viola Davis, and I, I think the thing ultimately, uh, and we can get into this a little later, but like, I think you latch on to certain performances and characters in this, hoping that they'll redeem the rest of it, but it's, it's an execution as, in both narrative and to a point I know you want to make about the editing and sort of, the, there's a structureless, uh, a, a, a structureless, to the movie, yeah. <laughs> to the movie that is just, I, it, it's like the the first act felt like a Schumacher Batman movie to me, where it's like, okay, it's cheesy and dumb, but it is what it is, and then it just gets kind of dreary and doesn't really have it. There's no real point to having the Suicide Squad together when uh, you have basically these Navy Seal dudes who are pretty much doing just as well as you guys. I mean, you assembled the Suicide Squad to have them walk 10 city blocks. Yep. Yeah. That's basically, like, what else did they yeah. do in the movie? There's, like, a confusion to the movie. Like, once they go on their mission, it's like, wait, what's the mission? They, they kind of, like, say some stuff. It's like, we're, we're not going over there. We're going over here. You know, not where the big like, giant why? magical mess is. Oh, and you're like, wait, again, what? Yeah. And then, yeah, with the reveal that it, you know, they're there, really there to save Amanda Waller. And it's like, wait a second. Why was she even there? Yeah. <laughs> well, she was planting... They were apparently there was something with they were going under the tunnel and they were going to do something, but Enchantress went rogue and it's needlessly convoluted. Yes, and they were trying to put in a twist where you didn't need a twist. Yes, every twist made me roll my eyes like so hard. It was yeah. like, oh my gosh, really? And then like it's, when they reveal that flag, it has a romance with Enchantress or with June Moon. But it's they just reveal like, it at the cares? beginning of the like, movie. But the, the, he reveals it to the rest of the team, right? And so. 
as if that's supposed to have an impact on something, and we're just, oh my god. Okay, so why there, that character didn't get killed off, I don't know. What, why what, all what? of them didn't get killed yeah. off Ooh. is something. But we could we could keep meandering through, but I know you have some bullet points you want us to hit, uh, and then we can tear them apart that <laughs> way. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, specific issues, but let's talk about um, a character uh, I think that we were all excited to see finally make her big screen debut, and that's Harley Quinn. Um, Jim, I have a question. Y yes, Carrie. Why, why is Harley Quinn a character who you call to defeat an evil centuries-old witch? Well, that's an excellent question, <laughs> to which I say I wouldn't call her. If you're going up against a demonic entity, the hot chick in the hot pants with the baseball bat is not somebody you need. I don't think you actually, I don't think you need uh, Killer Croc to go off, up against her. I don't know what he's bringing to the table. I don't know. I mean, Deadshot, at least he can shoot, you know. He's, Diablo? You know, like Diablo, that? he's got fire yeah. And evidently, by the end of the movie, he is the only one he actually needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slipknot, well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about Slipknot in a little bit. But, you know, Harley, Harley is the, the, the fan favorite character. Um, that people have been really championed a bit, wanting to see on the big screen. You know, Margot Robbie, even before, months before this movie came out, the cosplay of her, you know, the merch that I'm sure she's selling. I think there was a practical business reason why both Harley and Joker in this movie, they sell stuff. Right. You and know? you sure. know those and faces more now. than you do any other face in this movie. This is a Will Smith movie, and Will Smith is really the one that nobody's talking about, I, and he's were, the only good one. There were <laughs> multiple points in the movie <laughs> where I was like, why why did they call her? And even even at the beginning when Amanda Waller, like, basically there's like, we'll get into the editing, but there are like two clunky scenes introducing you sort of to Belle Reve and to Deadshot and, and Harley. And then it jumps into Amanda Waller giving her pitch and running through like her- Her basil all, exposition. Yeah, yeah. Like, like all the characters who she, or all the people that she wants in her Suicide Squad. And when she's talking about Harley, like she's like Deadshot, you know, he, he, has perfect aim. Diablo, he can, you know, manipulate fire, manipulate yeah. fire and, and has the, these abilities. They never even get to Slipknot because he's only important <laughs> enough to kill immediately. But partly they're like, she's crazy. She's crazy in the Joker's Joker. Girlfriend. She's the Joker's girlfriend and she's crazy. It's not like she has amazing aim. She is as crazy. Like, yeah. there are no actual reasons other than she's That's crazy why the Joker enough to do probably, anything. And we can talk more about the villain in a minute, but the Joker probably should have just been the villain of the movie because then you would justify, well, she understands him better than That's anyone. That's where a lot of confusion was because I kept thinking, like, where does the Joker's storyline, like, intersect with this? Why are they bringing Harley? Harley, you probably know some, like, some underworld, like, crime secrets of the Joker and that will, like, come into play later. But you're right. They never got to it. It seemed, like, completely pointless having her there. Um, but since she was in the movie, like, just talking about her performance, I... I kept wanting to like her more than I did. Oh, I thought yeah, it was she fine. Didn't really work for me. I thought it was fine, but like she wasn't quite nailing the the humor of that character. Like, I think all, that a lot might... of her jokes like fell flat, and I was like, this should be sort of like killing, right? We should be like, oh, ha, ha, Harley. But I was kind of like, okay, story. that was cute. I think I and I think this points to uh, uh, an issue that you you've cited before we start rolling is editing. I think the pacing. I think those jokes would have landed better if the movie wasn't such a, a, a Frankenstein's monster of editors, and we find out from the Hollywood Reporter that there were two competing cuts, a trailer house basically cut the movie version. that we the see mo in theaters, yeah. And, and yeah. Which it's you just, see in the terrible, terrible music cues that come across. It's everything just so is just sloppy. like these, these just on the nose needle drops of like, okay, really? When Eminem Amanda without me, like, ah. Yeah. Oh. But, but, but no, Amanda Waller getting introduced to Sympathy for the Devil, it's like, come on. Or, yeah. or you know, just everything was so on the nose. But Harley Quinn is, you know, they were, they're really banking on this character. I mean, we've, it, we, Margot Robbie uh, confirmed for us in an interview we did with her this week that she's had discussions with, uh, with Warner Brothers about doing her own film. Do you think Harley Quinn as sort of a character and a brand is damaged coming out of this movie or? Yeah. Damaged? Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I went there, yes. I think so. I mean, so uh, to me, 
I kept watching this movie thinking of Harley sort of as the Black Widow, right? Where mm. the Black Widow is is the one character, well, Hawkeye as well, but she's the, the female character in the Avengers who doesn't have any abilities. But you walk out of those movies and you say, yeah, I get why she's there. Yeah. I get what she brings to the team. And to me, Harley was a similar character here, but I didn't see that. And also, I, I hated her origin story. I hated it so much. And so frequently, like, I feel like this is what happens when you have a, a writer who's not feminist, which is fine, you don't have to be, but who's trying to write a character that is a feminist icon because it just never worked from the beginning where Griggs is like, oh, you can't sleep on the bars. And she's like, I can sleep with who I want. And I was like, that's not empowering. And then all this stuff, like, they're like, she's crazier than the Joker is, but she's the Joker's girlfriend. She's his queen. Yeah. He keeps trying to save her. And she's like, yeah, sure. It's just like, none of it was empowering. None of it made me but interested in her. But isn't that essentially the problem with the character of Harley Quinn? If you go back and read her origin from the comic, it's, the movie's not dissimilar. The one thing they do change that I think speaks kind of to her agency and all that is they have the Joker and we've seen this in the clips and in the trailers he zaps her he basically uh, electroshocks her um, and there, the movie sort of implies that yes she was definitely attracted to the Joker but she's not quite right after that happens. Well she seemed that this is the, the the crux for me for her character and her whole arc was that when we first meet her and she's like you know uh, falling in love with him we never understand why she falls in love with mm -hmm. him. How do you fall in love with the craziest most violent of all supervillains? I don't know. That's interesting. I would want to know that. They but don't, have they, they ever addressed that yeah, in the comics or the cartoons? They have. And, they have yeah. yeah. But th yeah you kind of get it if you read like Mad Love you, you know, know what I'm talking about. Um, that explains it, and you kind of get it. Uh, but this is just, they just kind of, when, when we meet her, even in her flashback, which is supposed to be her origin, she's already in love with her, uh, with, with love with the Joker. So we, we've missed that very, very important, crucial step. And even when she was about to be tasered, she was already crazy. She, cause she's like, ooh, you're gonna hurt me? She was already crazy I, before I, he tasered her. I still don't understand that. Okay, so she she's in love with him, and he's like, get me a machine gun. So she does, and then he destroys everything. Then he's like, then he, but he is gonna torture her. Like, he's not doing that out of love, and she thinks he's gonna kill her, and he's like, no, I'm just gonna hurt you real bad. And so it's like, okay, but she so- she wanted it. But like, I don't think she did that. Like, well, they cut out a scene of her, we saw this in set photos, where she like takes a motorcycle and chases after him. And and there's that whole bit. And because we, we Wait, saw- Wait, in that, in the flashbacks? There was a sequence that was filmed because we saw set photos and everything where she's on a motorcycle and it's like, it looks like, and I could be wrong, but it looks like she was like pursuing the Joker because he had his car and all that. And there's a scene where he hits her that we saw all this stuff getting filmed and then so but in the movie none of that is in there so it looks like she chose to go to like ace chemicals uh, see i i watched that, watch that is, is like, like their wedding essentially because she she jumps in i there. just viewed it as as he, so she helps him because she's in love with him because she's already a little bit unhinged. But then when they're destroying, um, they're killing everyone there. Instead of killing her, he like punishes her by zapping her. And then she loses her mind a bit and is crazy. And for some reason at that point, he's like, yeah, you know, if you want to, if you want to, be like me, we can do this forever, like don't die for me, live for me. I just did not buy any of their romance and I still don't really buy that he, the way he clearly is supposed to have feelings for her, but I don't understand why and I just felt like they completely did take away her agency even though they tried to give it back to her by her being zapped, which I think you're right, is a pivotal moment that she's like, yeah, sure, I'll fall into into the chemicals and then he goes down and say, hey, I just, none of it worked for me. It drove yeah. me, I wish that it hadn't been in there and you were just left to fill in the blanks yourself and I feel that way with a lot of these characters like I, I kept thinking back again not to keep comparing it to Guardians but another super or to, to Marvel but another superhero ensemble movie filled with misfits was Guardians and that had all these characters and all you have to see is Rocket pulling a shirt over his back and have that moment where you understand and you get so much about this character that we don't need flashbacks to him being operated on and tested and like it's, it makes yeah. me so mad. It's just such sloppy, sloppy filmmaking. I mean, sloppy filmmaking is it, it really captures everything that's wrong with this movie because there is a lot of, there were just a lot of choices made, whether it was in the editing room or just at the scripting stage. But I, I, I'm I'm hard pressed to find a lot of things I I, I actually liked about the movie. Um, I mean, I'm curious to see more of Harley. I'm curious to see more of, of Joker. 
but um, and Deadshot, but I, I just feel like they're tarnished now in a way that they didn't. It, this didn't have to be this bad. It could have it could have been an okay movie, and it still would have been you know in a, for a lot of people a step up. But um, just real quick, um, I, I know if it, the question was asked earlier if if, if Ken Harley, would we want to see her in another movie or something? Or and I just, movie. I despite, or, or you know, just despite every all the bad intro she got, I do feel like there's still potential for that character. I feel like Margot Robbie, like kind of, I feel like she owns like kind of the personality of that character. It, it, and I don't think the writing was strong, nor was the movie she was in that strong. But I do feel like there's a lot to that character that can still go on and be in like like a Gotham City Sirens or Birds of Prey type movie, yeah. um, or be in her own solo feature. Well, I've seen seeing what she's done in the comic books, she's almost her own small like franchise in the comics. Like There's almost a small line of Harley well, Quinn Well, she's selling comics. merch and stuff like that. I mean, if, if once the, the reports start coming out of, of how much uh, product has been sold from Suicide Squad, if all those daddy's little monster shirts sell and, and you know, all the Harley and Joker stuff sells, and it looks like it is, I mean, that... One million cosplayers can't be wrong. Uh, uh, so, you know, I, I'm sure she'll show up again for no other reason than to sell new stuff. Yeah. But but I, I just feel like that character, it's it's tough to make an argument for why, why, why is Harley Quinn uh, considered a, see, they're right, you have to hold on to the cards. I'll hold now. the cards. Uh, <laughs> why is Harley Quinn uh, a feminist icon? What makes this a feminist icon? She, she this there's something inherently problematic about that character. It's about a person who's in an abused relationship, and it's fascinating from a psychological perspective, but you're trying to make, you're trying to make something that where there were a lot of very morally questionable choices made about this character and their depiction work as a, as a hero or somebody who's, you know, uh, uh, suggestive of, of something more noble, and it's, it's uh, to me, there's just something very, off about the very nature of this character. Yeah. She's kind of like DC's Deadpool, is how I would put it. That's what she's evolved into. It's not how she started. Yeah. But you can see like a lot of bad things happen to this character, but yet she has become her own. She has she has her own agency. She goes. She tells her own stories. Uh, her way she goes about it is very unique. And Harley Quinn, she has a, a, a <laughs> what is what, is it taxidermy when you have an animal that yeah. you stuff mm -hmm. that like a beaver. <laughs> She has a naked in the gun comics stuff that paper. like <laughs> that talks to her, and <laughs> she's got her own like shtick, and just the way she goes about like solving her problems is very like Harley, and that is like, and it really when we say feminist, we just mean a, a character who is really just as has as much agency and his character and is as interesting um, and independent as any of the male characters, right? And so she she has become that in comics where a lot. Have failed to do that, so yeah. that's what that's what people have like latched onto. She's got her own things like separate from the Joker and from Batman, and and like so I, I do feel like that can go and be its own like movie franchise or her get like a solo yeah. movie. Now, part of the one element of her relationship with Joker is at least it has been in the comics and on the cartoon was was abuse, and there was something I noticed in this movie. There's a lot of like implied or outright just shown violence. Towards women, I mean, you know, Slipknot is the first thing he punches a woman. Uh, uh, Deadshot says he's going to punch a woman. Batman punches her. Like, there's a lot of that kind of stuff in there, and 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 just or even like, okay, so El Diablo is having his his fantasy moment at the train station when he thinks of his wife and kids, and think and instead of thinking of like having a family thing, all you know, the fantasy is. Oh, I'm back from the dead so we can go have sex because the kids are yeah, asleep. That... It's like, really? Come on. Oh, yeah, and for Harley's dream It's like this to whole be... movie felt like it was written in a like strip Like a club. wife and like, he married me. Yeah, and have you know, them all be a normal, but that's, happy family. But that's been a, a fantasy of Harley, so from, that's in Mad Love, too, where she envisions Joker and babies and all that. But to have it, it, it just doesn't work. It doesn't track, especially in the way they showed it in the movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, I don't know. There was, it was nothing Harley about that. To the the moment with Batman and Harley is something that I've seen talked about a lot since the review embargo lifted. And so I was waiting for that moment and, and it happened. The thing for me is like, you know, when 
when they're down under the water and she starts fighting and he punches her, knock her out. That got a laugh, which like it's violence against women, but also he's like needs to knock out yeah. a villain. That I was like, I'll let that go. It was the CPR though, the super like rapey CPR where he's like, it's like very seductively shot when he like tries to resuscitate her and then she like starts making out with him, but then like he like threw, it was yeah. just that I think stuff. they were trying to have their Batman Returns, Batman Catwoman moment and no. it just didn't work. Especially didn't work. when it's, yeah, it just, it did not work. And you're right, they, I think it was Deadshot who had the line where he's like, you know, I wouldn't kill a kid or a woman, but it seemed, he is, he's our most likable character to me in yeah. this movie, and he's apparently the only one who doesn't have an issue with hitting women. Yeah, no, I mean, this is, the, there, there was just a lot of, um, just a lot of questionable choices. And I know it's a movie about bad guys, but I, I think it's just, I, I, it, we talked about this on, on a Keep It Real last year, and I think it was Carl and I, I don't think you were on it. Uh, it may have been back when Roth was there. But we talked about those set photos of Joker hitting Harley. And I said, like, I didn't, it just, it, to me, I had an issue with that. And a lot of people were, like, rolling their eyes at me and everything about it. Not, not on the podcast. But I think in the context of the movie, you see that there is just a sort of a, a latent misogyny throughout this whole movie, you know? Um, it's like there are only two types of, of women, apparently, in this universe. One who can be as nasty as a man, which is Amanda Waller, or one who just belongs in a strip club or servicing her man. There's, there's nothing in between. I, you know? I agree with you about sort of the latent mythology, and I think that comes out in the writing where, again, like I kept feeling like they were trying to write these characters who are like, with capital letters, like strong female character. But with Harley, it, it just was not working again and again. Like they have that scene where she, they're all getting dressed up with their gear yeah. and she pull, she's like, hey guys, what are you looking at? But right before that, they have like a sexy shot of her like mm -hmm. pulling her shirt over her bra. And I'm like, it doesn't work when you're doing exactly what you're trying to like have your character They were trying overcome. to have it both ways. Yeah. She wasn't even arrested wearing that. So why did she even yeah. have that outfit? Yeah, they had like... <laughs> Maybe she had it for a court date. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They just they kept having stuff out, like that back. with her. Like they were talking about this. People were talking about this before. But like why does Katana need a belly shirt? Like why is Enchantress just constantly in like just... Negligent. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Are we having that conversation now, guys? Well, no, <laughs> but I mean if, if we're talking about that element of it. But even, I mean, I heard and I don't... I don't know for sure that it's true or not, but I heard that they like CGI'd Harley's shorts shorter and things like that. Like, why is she mm, running her around? Her shorts in, are pretty short. On, I know, on but like, why is she running around in hot pants? It's well, I like, mean, the character, I, I'm not defending, but I'm saying there is a precedent for it in the comics, too. She did, that's a look taken from the comics. And it's a nod to Blondie, and that's Blondie's outfit, the, the uh, Debbie Harry from Blondie, I Wait, should Wait, she never had the, the hot pants in the comics yeah, that I did. could think of. No, from a few years ago. There's that famous shot of her with the thing, and she's in hot pants. Yeah. But is she okay. in it for the entire that. arc? Like, couldn't yeah. she have been in that for a scene? And I, then, like, I did like the little Alex Ross moment of, of that, that shot of him with the... the Tux and, and she's in the, the classic outfit. Yeah, I did uh, like that. You know, it's like. And she has that moment too when she pulls it out of the bag and she's yeah, holding it. She has that, that sort yeah. of, yeah. Like there were just, there were just a lot of choices made throughout that just don't add up. What's what's next on our list? We, we, what, let's, uh, we've talked about Harley. Let's talk about the Joker. What do we think? We have a new Joker coming off the heels of Heath Ledger, Oscar winning. You know, performance, very iconic take on the Joker. Nobody thought anyone could follow Jack Nicholson. They did. Uh, my two cents on this new Joker is that he's okay, but all the stories about what Jared Leto did to his co-stars are a lot more interesting than anything Joker did in the movie. I thought that the Joker could not be in this movie and it would have been a fine, just, just as bad or maybe better. Yeah, he serves no purpose to the plot, he sort of like awkwardly cuts across the movie instead of like having yeah. a point to be in it. And even he shows up at the end to get Harley and we're like, I was like, why what? is that how you end yeah. this movie? Who cares, you know? Yeah. Uh, the Joker, as far as his like love conquers all, Joshua, that's why. <laughs> even mad love. Yeah, that's true love. Uh, yeah, so there's performance as the Joker. It was sort of like unsettling and creepy, but at like, at the end, you know that guy who was like into Harley? 
Yeah. And then mm-hmm. the, 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 the common. crazy... Common. It was common. Oh, it was common, yeah. yeah. yeah what's the this crazy thing, Joker thing he did to him for yeah. looking at Harley was shoot him. And it's like, what? Like, that's how you're ending this scene? Like, yeah. he, he never got, like, a... I want to know how I got these scars, or like a why yeah. so serious type scene where he really got to like shine as the Joker. Yeah. I feel like there's potential in, I don't think he did a bad job, but I don't think he got good material to work with. Yeah. And as far as the tattoos and the teeth go, I don't think that really played in. I thought we were going to get some sort of reasoning behind it all because it, it, it wasn't really distract people me from out it with though, his teeth or something. Know, I thought like, it. I don't, it was just weird. Well, at one point, he drew like was a like a mustache or he drew a smile facial hair. Yeah. Oh, was that a larger? Yeah, or, yeah, it was um, a big smile. Like, I did like. Face? I did okay. like but his, 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 his smiley face. Hand, and I was like, thing, yeah. I know it was creepy and unsettling, but he never got really much to do with that. Yeah, and and I, I again the the. If you're gonna, it just felt like okay. We need to have Harley and Joker in there because they sell stuff. Yeah, I I think that that's what it is. Like they wanted to have a Harley and Joker movie and have a Suicide Squad team movie, yeah. but the Joker constantly trying to save Harley throughout the movie, all the way to the end when it seemed like they all got what they wanted, and yet he comes and rescues her. Like those two things didn't gel together, and they had a couple moments where the team members would leave, but then come back for no good reason and she had that moment when like she went out that whole distracting scene where the joker came to rescue her and then amanda waller immediately shot him down i was like why and then you do that again when amanda waller gets picked up and then she gets shot down and then it's like okay let's have a leisurely walk to the center of the city uh yeah i thought i thought that he should have just been cut from this movie entirely or been made the villain of the movie i mean we said earlier but if you're going to have the Joker and Harley, she can justify her inclusion on the team by being the one that understands him better than anyone. Mm-hmm. But none of that came into play. Yeah. And, and, just... and he works great to show, like, all the Suicide Squad, they're all bad guys. But when you compare them to the Joker, maybe they're not so bad. So yeah. that's sort of He's like a narrative yeah. device to get, get us on their side and so that it's like, at least they're not as bad as the Joker, right? Yeah. There's an animated movie, Batman Assault on, on Arkham, and it was like the Suicide Squad had to go into Arkham to do a mission for Amanda Waller. They bring Harley Quinn. And that's sort of like a more Harley Quinn level thing, infiltrating a prison, right? Yeah. Um, Batman is hunting them. And when they get there, the Joker is there. And of course, that's a huge problem for Harley Quinn. Uh, the Joker breaks out and they're, they're battling Batman on one side, Joker on the other side, and then while they're trying to still complete their mission, it ends up with this crazy like battle in the end. And it's so, co- it's so good, it was so cool, I really like the animated feature. And when I heard that Joker was going to be in Suicide Squad, I thought, I thought surely, mm. surely that's like the same direction they're going, but nope. The no. worst villain yeah. in any superhero If you want movie. a decent Suicide Squad movie, the Joker is the worst Batman. villain? No, no, the icon. worst villain they went with oh. in this, with Enchantress. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let's let's. Uh, uh, but overall, we we do we want to see more of Jared Leto's Joker in the future, or one and done? I mean, I, yeah. I think we already know we are, right? Like, no, it's not a given. It's not a given. I would see a Joker and Harley movie, and I wish that they had just saved him here for a Joker and Harley movie. But they never did. Like you said, they never did enough with him, and, and I think it was Eric Goldman that we had, after I saw the movie, I was the last one to see it, um, and I started a big group text that Joshua just observed from afar and woke <laughs> up with like, it's what, 60, 60 te- texts? Text. Oh. I think it was Eric Goldman who said there like, if Joker's just hanging out at a bar, why can Batman just not Oh, that was come? me. Oh, that, that was, was me. you. Yeah. That was if, you. If everyone knows he's got a nightclub and Common can go find him, why doesn't Batman just walk in and kick everyone's ass and call it a day? Like, uh, you know, it's, you, you take for granted in other things that, well, he has a lair, but not everyone knows about it. But you're running a bar, you yeah. know? Like, <laughs> it's like, it's, you're you know, some find people are sort of untouchable on their turf. Or maybe yeah. there's like legal reasons. Like, he got, he was released from Arkham, and so he, he's not necessarily doing anything bad if he's running a nightclub. You have to catch him in the act kind well, of thing. I will say, for the fact <laughs> I'm that this is. I'm pretty sure a, a convicted murderer can't get a liquor license, but I hear you. Screw <laughs> him and book logic. No, I get it. But no, I think that for, again, like going back to this movie being very underdeveloped for how long it is, <laughs> you know, you have this movie that's about, what, eight? or so villains around our, our DC EU landscape and we don't get any sense of how villainy actually works in this yeah. world and show the other Two side hours of it. and 10 minutes with 15 minutes of plot. Yeah, and Pretty like much. an hour of flashbacks that had nothing. And walking, yeah. walking through Toronto, doubling for yeah. Midway City. Um, 
Now, that's what we thought about the Joker. <laughs> that's yeah, the Joker. The Joker. Uh, well, let us know what you think of him. I, I thought Jared Leto was fine, even though he sounded a lot like Heath Ledger's Joker. But I'm curious to see what they can do next with him. I guess we're all on the same page, but. I'd like to see him go head to head with with Ben Affleck. You know, maybe they yeah. Do that, in that the was solo another movie. missed opportunity. You have Batman and Joker in your movie. Like on paper, when everything was announced early on, like oh, it makes sense. You reintroduce the Joker in a Suicide Squad movie where it's not, you know, um, where that way you don't have to compete with like Dark Knight and a Joker versus Batman movie. So it made sense when they initially announced it, but the use of that character, and then if you're gonna throw Batman into, like they were that close, he's on the roof, but there's never a moment between Batman and Joker. I think Joker, that's fine and to I sort of like, to, to like tease it, because it's like, th that, this is not the movie for that particular confrontation, but maybe I, I would have liked. Moment between them I would have liked something. I, I do want to see them go head to head and sort of give the Joker some good material, put him in the same room as uh, Bat Batfleck, and then see what happens. Also, I don't know if it was intentional that when they had all those like sticky, sweet pop up, you know, details about all the different characters, that for Harley, for like a split second, it was like complicit in Robin's murder, and then it was immediately. Off the I screen. missed that one. It was because it was there for a split second, but it said it in the lower left. It was like complicit in Robin's murder, and I was like, "What?" Really interesting. I okay. missed that. Okay, I Good missed eye. that bit. Yeah, Easter egg. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got one. Yeah. <laughs> well, let I'm let sure. us know what you thought of the Joker in the comments. Uh, let's move on and talk about the true. Vi oh, again, spoilers. The true villain of this movie, the Enchantress, and her brother, Incubus. Um, Sorry, I just fell asleep boy, there what a, for a second. You know, what a, uh, I can't swear, but what a poop show that Yeah, that they never what even call him horrible. Incubus, but yeah, we know who that's who he is. Yeah. Um, th to be honest, sure they don't call him? I thought maybe there was one. I nah, didn't hear it. Yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was the worst. You know, in the comic book, uh, the, Suicide Squad, the, the Suicide Squad, the original run back from like 1987 with John Ostrander and like Luke McDonald, it was like so good, and the Enchantress was on the team. She was a part, or she was June Moon, and then she would like almost reluctantly bring out the Enchantress because she was wild and crazily powerful, and she would help them complete the mission. But then she would kind of get out of control, and they would have to take her down. And so I it's get, like Jekyll and Hyde and Lee yeah, Lister, and sort of, yeah. in the comic. And I thought mm -hmm. that's what they were gonna do in the movie, and they're like, nope. And, uh, and there was, it was just such a like, dramatic struggle for her to try to contain the Enchantress. And the Enchantress, she was so like, entertaining and just the crazy stuff she would say when in she the came comics? out. Yeah. yeah, in the comics. She would come out and be like, I'll kill you all! <laughs> and yeah. it was just like, it's, it was really fun. Like, Deadshot had to like, shoot her and like, he's, his very precise aim, he would like, graze her skull and like, knocked her out just enough to so she turned back into June Moon. Yeah. Um, and they'd bring her back, haul her back to Belle Reve. For rehabilitation, but yeah, so that was that was like an interesting dynamic. She was like actually a part of the team. And she's she was almost like their the Hulk. team in this movie. And Chandra yeah. was like their Hulk. She was like yeah. uncontrollable, and they had to like tame her. Um, but in this, yeah, she just for no reason, just this, that we know really, she just kind of escapes, and she's like, I'm gonna make this generic world destroying device, and then oh, let me get a my brother. It's too. a machine. Yeah. Another portal to the sky. Crap. How many of these movies? I mean, Marvel has done it too. Everyone enough moratorium on a portal to I, the sky. And what the hell was it doing? Why was nothing. there a it wasn't doing bunch anything. of crap floating it around? Was, it was electrocuting things around the world. And why did it give, why did a sorcery give everyone like giant syphilis sores on their face? I don't get it. Why I see, did, okay. You know? so, so, okay, so first of all, I don't care about June Moon. And I don't care about Enchantress from the start, from the beginning when they're introduced. Super generic, like, like white bread, boring, like, relationship with Rick Flagg. Um, we see- Which turned out to have been just a giant manipulation on but, Amanda but, Waller's but part. Amanda Waller says that at the very beginning. She's like, I manipulated him to fall in love with her so that I would have control of him I thought she didn't well. say that till later, but who cares? She, no, she says it in the beginning yeah. when she's explaining uh, the whole rundown. Cara Delevingne, not good. She's terrible. She's, she's Razzie worthy. She's she's Razzie -worthy not good bad. as June and not good as Enchantress. The whole reason, so this comes about because Amanda Waller has her heart and is like stabbing it like crazy, like that's not gonna have a terrible effect, but doesn't for some reason keep her brother in that secure case. She just leaves him out because why no, not? No, she didn't know that he had a brother. Yeah, she went back Amanda to her original Waller. cave and I found thought, the second totem and broke it to, to release the brother. But that's a small thing. I thought, I thought she did know that she had a brother. Uh, that Amanda Waller knew? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, no. okay, well, all right. 
right. So that that question is resolved. But then you you Here's have you you <laughs> she's supposed to be a part of this team, like you said. But then they're like, oh, there's this beast. I'm just going to take Enchantress by herself instead of with this team that we assembled. And then that immediately goes wrong. Hold on, let me back up. Enchantress, like June, just summons Enchantress in her sleep. That's how this all starts. Like there's she no. She is technically possessed by her. So she is, but I so she she summons her, and then. And then Enchantress goes to a bathroom, like yeah. Well, talk about a weird why random she, recruitment thing. Why didn't here. she Just, possess Rick Flag? He was right there. Yeah, like that would have been more interesting instead of yep. just this random dude. Yeah. Okay, jump ahead. Poor bastard, just trying to wash his just hands. Just trying to and wash his hands. He's being a good guy. He had plans his hands. for that night. Everything ruined. And then you you get to this again, like the worst editing jump for me in this movie. I hate. I don't like the beginning how it starts off with the only two characters the movie cares about, and then. Like doesn't bother introducing any of the other Suicide Squad people in Belle Reve. But then you jump to the scene in the movie where they've assembled the squad, Amanda has approval to use the squad, and then she only sends in Enchantress. It immediately goes wrong in the next scene, and then it jumps to the next day. And then you're like, why did this happen? And that jumps, that leads into the syphilis head. And why couldn't, why couldn't Amanda Waller leave the city? Everyone else in the know. city did. Yeah. Everyone else, Why did they have to go in and re save her? It, no clue. Eh, <laughs> uh, it, it's like, it makes me so mad. And I seriously, like, that, that jarring thing with Enchantress in the middle when she brings about what, like, the whole second and third act bothered me. And then they fly into the city. The city is supposed to be evacuated, and yet someone guns down their helicopter. And me and the people we were, who I was with, we were like, wait, who's there to shoot them down? Yeah. Then all these monsters show up, and I, I just, legitimately, I was like, did I miss something? Yeah. Who are these creatures? And then they explain them afterwards. It was just a hodgepodge of uh, sloppy, sloppy, yeah. sloppy. Yeah. Why? Why? Who did shoot them down? And I think maybe those monsters. I think found it was a like her army something. because yeah. they are, have really good aim, apparently. And speak. Why? Going back to the, the fe feminist thing of just how like she was like this the stereotypical gross like sexy witch where like yeah. and in the comic she actually has a very sensible costume was like a green witch's outfit. Um, but in the movie she they was make her this from the ring. Yeah, it's this disgusting like big witch bikini. It was like super <laughs> sexualized, and it was just over the top. Oh my god! And then her for her dancing to, at the, oh, at the so end. bad. God, and then so for her terrible. to transform a guy, like a person, into a, one of her goons, oh. she has to like make out with them. So disgusting. So yeah. gross. So unneeded. I, I'm sorry. I think the the last act of this movie is Fantastic Four level bad. Last year's Fantastic Four. In, in fact, in some ways, I think Fantastic Four might be better. It does reek movie. of reshoots, I'll yeah. say, like the yeah. last uh, I mean, yeah, what's his face? Uh, uh, um, uh, Rick Flagg's hair changes from scene to scene. That's another oh, big I telltale. Didn't like, that. Oh yeah, no, my God. Every every other shot, his hair was like different. Just like Invisible like, Woman's hair was different. Like, yeah, was a wig exactly. And... It was the same thing. And then, um, but okay, so they all get to the train station to fight Enchantress. And what exactly was their plan? So they're gonna blow up. Yeah, they're gonna use a bomb. And so you need the Suicide Squad that? when the Navy SEALs or the guys who are who, whatever Special Forces guys were the ones that planted the actual bomb. Yeah, with a little help from Killer Croc, but and then Diablo is just so you assume you get all these people together to fight a witch. And they each just take one turn at a time, or Why mostly did she just even stand bother back with just, any of it. You know. Why did yeah. Enchantress let them do it? She could have killed them a billion yeah, times and over. How did, they, if, did anyone know Diablo was going to do that? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. he he didn't like lay that card on the table. That was a yeah. surprise. Like yeah. if he didn't do that, they all just would have been wiped out. And, okay, and how about it just ending like a really bad '90s movie where just two giant really crappy looking CG characters duking it out. I mean, I, I interviewed the actor, um, I'm drawing him, Lane Shannon or something like that, the guy who plays Incubus, and he said that, you know, they used, um, you know, this really cutting edge technology, all these hundreds of cameras to capture everything. I'm like, it looks like crap from 1999. It looks It's terrible. like the end fight from Mortal Kombat 2. Annihilation. <laughs> it just, yeah, it, this this is your cutting edge visual technology. Nope, wasn't very good. No, yeah. yeah. And Diablo it's can even, morph himself into a giant like not fire that I monster. Even, knew about, even going apparently. back a minute, like why they assemble the team, things go to crap in in Midway City, and then they're like, okay, time to send in that that team that Amanda Waller says. So you assume 
they're gonna go and fight this creature, but then their mission is apparently to go to the top of a building, which we later find out is because Amanda Waller's up there, but it was like so, you're like, what? But Rick but Flags right that there. walks in and gets her anyway, right so there. you didn't need them. You're like, why are you here for, th it's right there, that other thing. Yeah, why, there's, yeah, there's right, no What was the plan to deal with that then? They were just gonna have the special forces I guys she actually to be fight saved. the supernatural people? I don't know. I and don't how does she walk, a, it, oh, you know, we can talk about this, I guess, uh, now, uh, I mean, look, that post-credit scene, or not even mid-credit scene, of her striking a deal with Bruce Wayne, and he's somehow gonna cover her ass, and she's gonna help him out finding the Justice League. How do you cover that up? You had a giant portal to the sky. Oh yeah, remember when Terrace got a, a supernatural weapon? Apparently that's what we're supposed to believe. Like, And I still don't understand like Deadshot, who I stand by as the most likable character in this movie, the, the thing closest to resembling a well-rounded character. Like his whole thing is, I, people Daddy, need to why know. why do you kill people? Oh, oh so bad. <laughs> is, so like, is like, like, I want people to know, people need to know what we did. Did people ever find out that the Suicide Squad was involved or are they still a secret? It's super unclear. They, they must be secret because they're all back in jail. That's yeah. true. That's the whole thing about them is supposed to be like a black ops thing. And that's, if, yeah. if someone does find out about them, they can be like, oh, we, but how are they going to? But how are yeah. they going to, like, cover, as you said, how are they covering up, the, in fact, the fact that all of Midway City was destroyed? Yeah because of her actions. I said this to you guys last night, but I will say it again here. Like, it was so funny that the one criticism coming out of Man of Steel that both BBS and Suicide Squad took was, evacuate the city beforehand. <laughs> and like, could you take all the other issues people had too and apply those? Like, that's the one thing. They're like, the city was evacuated. Yeah. It's all good. It's yeah. fine. We can destroy everything. It's fine. The city is empty. Now, there, there's, there's a lot of just... When it comes to the use of the villain in this movie, there were just so many uh, illogical decisions that were made. I never understood what the villain just wants to conquer the world, which is okay. Right there, you picked a generic thing. That's Even that's Apocalypse just Apocalypse was a better villain than this in X Men Apocalypse. At least he had a reason for yeah. why he was doing it. You know, um, there, there was no there was no reason to. Well, let me let me actually just ask you guys. Okay, this movie even though it wants to be very gritty and grounded in a, a, a realism to a degree, even though, yes, there are metas, but it's it's like X-Men level realism. But now you work in sorcery. And I don't feel like they ever, they, they never balanced these two things working. Not at least like how they were able to in the comics. And you do give things a pass in the comics because comics and yeah. you get it. But in, in a movie where you're setting it up as, you know, we have real bad people, uh, bad guys, and you know, but they're regular people. And then we live in a world that what metas, and we need a suicide squad there to fight the meta threat. But the meta threat you decide to pick is one that's not even meta. It's just sorcery. It's a completely different kind of animal. Yeah, it is sort of a meta, but it's a, another ball game. Right? Yeah, it's a tour. It's like this. This is why you didn't have, you know, Iron Man and Doctor Strange team up together in, a, in their first movie or whatever, you know? And like, yeah, like you, you, you need to get there. Right, right, and even in Thor, they're like, that's not actually magic, right? And yeah. they've taken a long time to hold out on Doctor Strange because they're like, that's a, a very complicated thing to meld it with the rest of the world. Right. Whereas yeah, yeah, here they just throw it out there. And then it, it like doesn't make sense why, again, we would send the Suicide Squad to take out a mystical threat, even though that's not the mission they were on. Yeah. But yeah, it makes, like, Deadshot can shoot things. What does that mean? I don't yeah. know. What, why can a bomb destroy a, a, you know, yeah. I don't get Wouldn't it. Wouldn't the spirit just go and, and possess somebody else? Then? Yeah, I don't know. He it's, just fell into a hole. He and just then, fell into a hole. And then also, you know how they were like they were destroying like all of the, the goons DCU. and like making them like like cutting their heads yeah. off and stuff. Yeah. And but then Amanda Waller later says, "Oh, um, you know, how are we supposed to fight these guys who they keep going after taking a headshot?" It's like, no, destroying their head is actually what was stopping them. Yes, so the movie's yes. own internal logic doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, what's, what's next on our list? Um, it's, it's a curse word. Okay, uh, well, let's leave that to last then. Uh, let's do, we, we talked about this a little bit, but you know, uh, Suicide Squad does set up all these other characters. Uh, where to next? Do we want a Suicide Squad sequel? Can these characters, uh, do we want to see them maybe just in other, show up in other people's movies? What, what, what do you think, Terry? 
Definitely not a sequel. <laughs> Again, I think they all should have died. This movie had... Aww. Well, okay. Only not, one person on the Suicide Squad died. Like, even the Dirty Dozen more people bought it. I, you know? Okay, I'll, I'll take that back. I think this movie had... There are about six characters off the top of my head that I think you could take out of this movie and the movie is better for it. That that I get on paper what they did technically in the plot, but if you take them out, the plot is a lot smoother. Like everyone from Griggs to the Joker. Um, and I think that is a big problem within the Suicide Squad itself. Like they hyped all these characters like Slipknot and Captain Boomerang and, and even Killer Croc and yeah. they just added nothing. Uh, again, I understand they did X, Y, and Z in the story, but they didn't actually add anything to it. I think this movie had about the time for... The same character could have done the, the, that action. Exactly. Them with the bomb I think I think this movie has time for three or four characters and that's Deadshot, I guess, th yeah, three or four, like Deadshot, Harley, Amanda Waller, and like Rick mm -hmm. Flag, yeah, I maybe guess. Like maybe Flag. like putting the other, anyway. How that so guy I think, made it alive to the end of the movie, I don't know. I but, don't okay. want to see a sequel because I came out of this, I, I started this movie having some level of interest about halfway through, didn't care about the villains, didn't care about the heroes, didn't mm. care about any characters, and ended really not caring about what comes next. But I do think that you could take some of these characters and have them appear in other movies, have Amanda Waller and Rick Flagg it pop up in, in another movie where they need to help sort of like Nick Fury yeah. and you know have the Joker appear in a Batman movie, have Harley pop up. I feel like Deadshot could show up in, in a solo Batman movie. See, I think Deadshot is the character that works best in this movie, but doesn't have anything that attaches him really to any other Characters. I get that Batman, yeah. like, was the one who took him in, but I just think he is the one who works best in this movie and maybe shouldn't continue on past it. Yeah. Joshua, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel actually would like to see a sequel just because I know I want to see a, a different director, different writer. Pretty much, I want. I pretty much want to redo. <laughs> even though it's a sequel, I want everything new from the ground up for the most part. So you want and basically like an Incredible Hulk to this one's Hulk. Yes, right? okay. I think that would be good because I feel like there's still potential in the concept which is so good in the comic books. And like in the comic book, they would constantly shake up and refresh the team and like reboot it with new characters, bring out yeah. old characters. Um, so I feel like they can benefit from doing that. Like we just get a new Suicide Squad um, maybe keep some core members, keep the like, dead shot. Um, Amanda Waller still has to be there. I thought she was actually the best part of the movie. Yeah, I yeah Viola Davis, Viola Davis is fine. Just she yeah. destroyed it in that role. She did the yeah. best with her material, though I still, why did she kill all those guys? Oh, yeah. it was plausible so, deniability for that giant thing in the sky. Yeah. The cat's yeah. out of the bag, Amanda. But, uh, so, like, and, and I feel like with this movie, the big thing it missed out on, and I, I read, I'm not harm so sure if it's true, that uh, David Ayer wrote the script in six weeks. No, 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 no. Spend some time on this next one and get to the real core of Suicide Squad. And what makes those, those stories interesting is like the many dynamics playing around them and sort of the purpose of the squad isn't to go take out something like the Enchantress. Not really, even though they have done supernatural threats in the comments. But you need to do something, just the core Suicide Squad story, which is like, you're in, the, in the comics, they would be sent on missions to go take out other superpowered terrorists in like other countries where the yeah. Justice League types couldn't touch, you know? Yeah. So you send them in on a black ops mission mm -hmm. and it's more grounded. There are people with crazy powers. That's a surprise when you get there. Like, oh crap, I didn't know this person could do that. But that's, that's it's not not as it's big. It doesn't need to be a world ending threat. Make it like a political thriller yeah. of this like crack team. And they, they have to be unlikable stuff. and there have to be different varying degrees of villains and such. And they have to be put in line by Amanda Waller and by Rick Flagg. And then also the comic had a hero who was on the team at Bronze Tiger. Um, and some others down the line, but he was great to also, because he was fighting alongside them, had powers like they did, but was there to also keep them in check. So I feel like there's Katana all these different. In this movie? I thought it was, but yeah. she didn't do anything. She didn't do anything. Then, then they like cut to her and she's like bawling. <laughs> well, oh, they're for also no like, reason. you know, or just like, she has a soul sword. Oh, well, that that happened. Yeah, like, I thought you that know, was going like, to come into, you know, with, I, I guess Harley did use it at the end, but I thought it was going to be more important because, like, oh, it's a magical weapon against a magical threat and yep. didn't nope. really, it wasn't that important mm -hmm. at yeah. the end. So, no. yeah, so I feel like there's, 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 there is potential to take the concept and try again. Yeah, I think that there is, there, there are at least four characters in here that, while tarnished, they're not completely uh, ruined. Unless this movie just opens huge and plummets, which I think it will. But uh, Harley, still workable, but they really need a better story for her she next She needs a time. deep rehab. Yeah. Uh, Joker, I think you can still do something with Leto's version of it. Deadshot, 
and Amanda Waller. Now, that said, <laughs> I don't want to see a sequel. I, I feel like they had, it should have worked right the first time. And, and, and I feel like the DCEU now, this is, uh, in my mind, it's two strikes. For a lot of you guys, it's, it's three strikes. But they cannot, um, they can't afford any more missteps. And I do wonder if this doesn't kind of pump the brakes on using these characters and other things like maybe they had planning. Like if Ben Affleck's Batman movie, maybe they don't use any of them. And they just, maybe they recast Joker again. I don't know. Um, I think it all depends on financially how this movie does because you can kind of soft reboot it that way. Um, Your big question on this card is, is the DCEU effed? Um, um, and I think I at this point, we'll like, have to talk about it next week when the box office numbers start rolling in. I think or actually, the like, after it, maybe. it's exhausting at this point. I, you know, we get a hard time for on keeping it real, sounding like we're just Marvel fanboys and and ragging on DC. But you put those movies side by side, and and there you just can't compare them. Like the the Marvel films are films that stand on their own and work yeah. as a part of this thing. You can feel the frustration and the fear and and just like the nervousness and that's I think why in Warner Brothers and DC and I think that's why these hodgepodge movies come together where there's just so many hands in the pot they're like we need this to work and then it comes out like this movie to me is like a Frankenstein monster yeah. of a movie like maybe there was an okay movie in there somewhere and I was saying with Joshua before we started recording like I honestly feel like if in my iMovie setup, like when this movie comes out on DVD, I could edit together a tighter version of this yeah. movie and I do not have any or very yeah. limited video experience with that. But it just like, it, it seriously to me feels like a, a Frankenstein monster and you got a little bit of that in BVS too where all these different things weren't working and they panicked even more with this one and yeah. it ended up even worse. We were talking just last week about how excited I was about Wonder Woman and that trailer. And after this, I'm like, I don't, no. I don't know if I can be anymore. If, they, if they're going to strong arm somebody as sort of a, you know, tough guy kind of director like David Ayer, then I, 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 I worry for Patty Jenkins. Like, are they just going to steamroll over her? With she just Wonder needs Woman? to have one vision. Like yeah. what these movies need is like one vision and not be trying to do six things at once. And what happens when you announce like as many movies as they did and and have that six week time frame for a script because you need that tight turnaround to hit all these crazy release dates you have, you end up with a mess. And mm -hmm. I wish I wish Warner Brothers had just earned their stripes with the DC films like Marvel did. Marvel started off slow and there were hiccups and they figured out what works. Yeah. And instead, Warner Brothers hasn't learned any of those lessons or DC or you know all the minds behind it and we're just ending up with movies that are working less and less and less and it's yeah. so so disheartening it's because I really like, do want this to be a great franchise the way yeah. the Red Sox uh, fans were before they they won two more world this could be the year this could be the year we win that's what it's beginning to feel like to be a DC fan this next one could be the one that yeah. doesn't suck yeah I and yeah we're not Marvel fanboys. I, you know, can personally say I love like all comic book things, and I just, I just like good movies. And DC just hasn't put any out. Like I'm yeah. so sorry. Like as you can tell, as, as I'm talking about the comic, I love the Suicide Squad comic. I love all the source material. Um, so I, it, I, I don't. I like the Arrow I, version of Suicide <laughs> Squad better. I love the <laughs> Nolan Batman. Films. So it's not oh, that yeah. it's like oh, all the DC movies suck because they're DC, and Marvel's great because it's Marvel. Oh. There's some Marvel movies I don't like, but at least. Every single Marvel movie that's come out has functioned as a movie first, so you can at least get to the point where you can pr critique like the plot and the characters and like the themes. We're not even at that part yet. They've yet, yet to make a really coherent, strong movie. Uh, I'm not convinced that Jeff Johns and his new role as, what is he, president of DC Films? But this, films. this was, Suicide Squad I, not, is still coming out of the lot. You just think he's not a... No, I just, no, no, I just don't you. think, at, at this point, I'm not convinced that the, the Bucks the buck doesn't stop with him. It stops with the guy who runs Warner Brothers. And as long as they're worrying about the brand and just having competing cuts and all this sort of thing, like, you're ne Jeff Johns is just going to end up taking one in the neck. Well, Because he's going to be tied to a, a series of movies. And it started with Green Lantern. He was involved with that movie. And at, at this point, I feel like he's damaging his own standing. And unless, unless he really is the one that can say to the head of Warner Brothers, Shut up. Listen to me. 
we're doing it this way. I'm trying to save you money. I'm trying to make you money. So just back off. Unless he's going to be empowered to actually be that guy, that bull in the china shop, it's not going to work because well, there's just there's Kevin Feige. You know, every Marvel movie that thing doesn't get to theaters unless he's like, this is it. Yeah. Well, he's the co-head of DC Films, but he was not that when when these squad. three movies, these yeah. past three DC movies, came up. So we actually have yet to see like a movie that's come out under of him being like the boss. He did work on Suicide Squad. Um, but but, now, but now we have two movies, one that's in post-production, Wonder Woman. He co-wrote Wonder Woman, in, right? One that's in production, yeah, he co-wrote it with, I believe, Zack Snyder. And then one that's in production with Justice League. Um, I mean, there so, there's already two more DC movies they coming. They could be tainted, but, or it could be that this is the end of a trilogy here, yeah. and we're moving we, on I think to we, a new I, era. What I'm just saying, I don't think we've yet to see a product of a DC movie under Jeff Johns' uh, co-head of DC Films. Yeah, and hopefully like the Flash president will be DC, the, now that there's the a lot one. of presidents now. You can but, see the shift too with Marvel, I think, right? It wasn't Thor the last Paramount co-production? No, they, they all, all, all Paramount did was distribute the movies. They didn't, they, didn't. They, 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 they had a hand in the marketing, which the marketing of the Paramount released Marvel movies was not anywhere near as good as the Disney owned mm. ones. Like, everything was far more, remember the Thor poster just writing on his face? That was Paramount, you know? Uh, Big Heads Iron Man poster, that was Paramount. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that DC, the DCEU has, has now even more work to do. This was supposed to be the one that saved you. Yeah. And now... He was supposed to be again, the chosen one. <laughs> well, and yet again, now we're going to have a whole other year of maybe Wonder Woman's yeah. the one. This is turning into like what video game movies. Warcraft's going to be the one. No, it isn't. Maybe Assassin's Creed. All right, maybe not. You know, yeah. like we'll find and out. We know there are good DC movies, like the Batman Nolan the, trilogy. Oh, well, I didn't love the last one, yeah. but those are great. You know, like yeah. Christopher Nolan. One Superman. person with yeah. one vision. I mean, Christopher who gets Nolan's, it. Christopher Reeves. How about yeah. that? I know. I think yeah. that's what these movies are missing. One person with one vision who gets it. And yeah. may, again, maybe Patty Jenkins and Wonder Woman. Maybe that'll be the one. Let's but see. this one, I, until we come through and Gal Gadot is like sending everyone like like severed rat heads and like they're <laughs> like the trailer park That's boys are like woman. redoing yeah. the movie. Patty I don't know. Patty Jenkins actually just tweeted that she thought Suicide Squad was great. So Okay, yeah, I will that, say someone someone responded to me. I know. I was like, could you line. imagine if she was like, this movie was garbage? Well, yeah, like, she's not allowed to say, I think. It would be, yeah. you know, yeah. it wouldn't be good for her. Yeah, I don't I don't hold that against her but yeah. Yeah. well <laughs> that that'll do it for our this week's keeping it real let's just close up with saying that suicide squad is tracking to open anywhere between 120 or i should say yeah about 120 to 140 million you know look it'll open big but opening weekends are a reflection of marketing it's the next weekend is the one where the real discussion and 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 uh, a source for Hollywood Reporter said the movie has to make between 750 and 800 million to break even to be considered a success for Warner Brothers. There's multipliers involved, and you have to the whole adage about you got to make back two and a half times what it costs to make your movie, yada yada. So, Suicide Squad could be another BVS where it opens huge and everyone's like, see, take it, suck it, critics. And then the next weekend, because audiences didn't like it, it plummets big time. I record see drop. That happening, yeah. And I think that is going to happen here. Um, so it needs good word of mouth. It needs people to show up and like the movie and want to go back for more. Uh, it's, it so, won't be me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we want to hear what you guys thought of the movie, of its characters. What do you think they can do better next time? Uh, you know, where does the DCEU go next? What do you want to see these characters do next? Do you want to see them again? <sighs> that was I, I'm really, I'm really tired of being let down by DC movies. Are you? Uh, let us know in the comments. That'll do for this week's show. Find us on Twitter at, at Joshua Yale, at Terry underscore Schwartz, at Jim Vavita. Send us your thoughts at keeping it real at IGN.com. Till next time, for all things movies, DC and otherwise, keep it here on IGN. Thanks for watching and listening.